Welcome back to The Punch. I'm David Penberthy and on the panel today, Tory Maguire and Luke McElveen. And in our Canberra studio, the Minister for Infrastructure, Anthony Albanese. Um, Minister, the New South Wales Premier, Nathan Rees, appears to have achieved sort of world's best practice in uh, clunking around in the cellar when it comes to his standing in the polls. He's got a disapproval rating of more than 50%. The state Liberal opposition um, is about eight points ahead. How worried is Federal Labor that with the federal election scheduled uh, to come before the New South Wales election, that the deep unpopularity of the New South Wales Labor government could see a protest vote registered against you guys at the federal poll? Look, we think uh, New South Wales Labor can turn it around. Uh, Nathan Rees has a good relationship with, uh, with Kevin Rudd. And uh, we're, what we're doing is cooperating with all the state governments, it must be said. We've got a pretty good relationship with uh, Colin Barnett in WA as well, as we've seen uh, with the, the Gorgon uh, announcements. And I spoke to, indeed, the WA Transport Minister, Simon O'Brien, just this morning. So we're busy working with all the state governments, but uh, we're concentrating, of course, on doing our job as a national government. And what we see uh, here as uh, an opposition is uh, a, a complete rabble. I mean, yesterday in Parliament, I saw the most extraordinary thing I've seen for a long time when a bunch of people, of uh, opposition MPs, walked out and then a couple of minutes later walked back in. It was like they had a coordinated dunny break. It was quite <laughs> extraordinary. For, uh, it was like they got out there and went, oh, what did we do that for? We've just walked out because uh, we're going to get 6,000 jobs in Western Australia. It was quite uh, extraordinary. Me and, uh, yeah, Wilson Tucky yelling at uh, Malcolm Turnbull. And, uh, you know, the, the consequences of this, uh, this rabble opposite uh, that we are serious because we can't get uh, a serious response on the carbon pollution reduction scheme and on a range of other measures. Minister, can I just drag you back to New South Wales for a minute? A couple of days ago on Plain Politics, your colleague Belinda Neal gave her husband John Delabosca what is being read as a glowing endorsement for his potential leadership of the uh, New South Wales ALP. I wondered if you would uh, care to take the opportunity to... Uh, to indulge in the same endorsement for your um, spouse, the Deputy Premier? No, she, uh, she speaks for herself and uh, I always uh, leave it at that. Uh, Nathan Rees is doing a terrific job as Premier and I think they're a good team in New South Wales. Well, look, you're being, you're being terrifically polite uh, there, Minister, because there's not too many people in the, on, the, on the state level in New South Wales Labor who, who think that, that Mr Rees is necessarily going to go the distance. but. We'll, we'll probably leave that, that point to one side. Um, Luke, I wanted to throw to you, we've seen the, the wash-up... Barry O'Farrell. A, a couple of... <laughs> Barry O'Farrell. We've got a bunch... Joe Hockey wants his job, I think, more and more. You can tell the factional world's gone mad when the uh, leader of the Labor's Labor left faction is attacking a Liberal for opposing privatisation. Um, <laughs> I, want to bring, uh, I want to bring Luke McElveen back into the conversation. Luke, um, the, the, the Telegraph and also uh, the Punch did quite a lot of coverage over the, uh, the, the question of, of gay marriage. Um, you had a question for Anthony uh, Albanese about that issue. Yeah, Minister, just wondering uh, where it's up to. I mean, it was one of those issues that um, uh, got a lot of coverage at the time uh, in the lead-up to, uh, to the ALP conference. Uh, as, a, as the local member for, for one of Sydney's more enlightened um, uh, electorates, <laughs> It's, it's a massive issue for you, obviously, as, as, the, as the MP, but also for the Labor left. Has it gone off the agenda or is it, is it still there very much as a live issue? Because we're not hearing anything about it. Well, we, we had our internal debates and we, uh, we determined a position and uh, that position stands. Um, one of the things that, that I'm getting back from the community is the appreciation for the uh, amendments uh, which have given same-sex couples equal rights across a range of issues. Uh, superannuation, I, I started that debate some years ago, but across uh, health and education we had a commitment in the platform now to move on uh, anti-discrimination and uh, that's been welcomed by uh, many of the groups uh, in uh, in my electorate and beyond. I mean rights for uh, 
for same-sex uh, relationships aren't confined, of course, just to people who happen to be uh, homosexual. I think that uh, I have a personal view that uh, of opposing discrimination across the board, whether it be race or gender or uh, religion or, uh, or sexuality, and uh, that's where I'm coming from um, in terms of, uh, of my view of the way that uh, that uh, a country like Australia moves forward increasingly. Uh, our diversity is our strength. And Minister, can I just ask you, another issue that's become a bit of an article of faith for uh, the left faction over the years is this sort of blanket um, opposition to um, expansion of a nuclear industry in Australia. Um, Labor um, made an adjustment uh, by um, jettisoning the three mines policy, but this week we've seen two strong voices on the uh, Labor side. Bob Hawke's come out again reiterating his call for a nuclear waste industry in Australia and we've also seen the Australian Workers Union, uh, one of the founding uh, bodies within the ALP, saying we should go full steam ahead towards a, a nuclear future. As someone who um, believes in the, the dangers of, of climate change as well, doesn't that mean that you perhaps as left leader should should help play your part in maybe reopening a broader discussion about about this. Well, of course, uh, Hawkey and uh, and the AWS views aren't aren't new. Um, the fact is that uh, nuclear power doesn't stack up for Australia. What we need to do is take advantage of uh, the uh, the tremendous access for renewables that we have. I mean, there's something a bit weird in the world when the German uh, solar industry is bigger than the Australian solar industry, when the worst, most miserable day in Australia has more sunshine than uh, than uh, the best day in Germany. Um, we've, uh, we've gone through a period whereby there was a decline in our renewables uh, over the period of the Howard government. You had uh, major companies uh, moving offshore Pacific Solar is based in Munich, fair way away from the Pacific. And what we need to do is to encourage the growth of, of those industries uh, because uh, that's where we have a, a tremendous comparative advantage. And uh, nuclear, in terms of the time yep. it takes to come online, the cost, mm. it simply mm. doesn't stack up. Yeah. OK, Minister, look, we're going to have to leave it there. We're sorry we lost you there at the start, but we got through it. <laughs> no worries. Um, I'd like to thank our panel again, Tori Maguire and uh, Luke McElveen. This has been The Punch. You can follow us at www.thepunch.com.au and we'll be back again in a couple of weeks' time when Parliament resumes. Thank you.